Tough decisions for the Hong Kong team as Sun Hung Kai Scallywag go into stealth mode. It's honestly the most complicated thing I think I've seen. This leg is getting more and more, you know, I mean, it's a little bit heartbreaking when you, you know, it's worked so hard to get, go from nowhere to where we've got to and now we're actually being handicapped by simply working that out to get in front of them. It's like, I look at beating my head against a brick wall. Hopefully, we've got two more skeds. we have got another 12 hours of still. I know, we're, yeah. I know we've done a good job here and we're in good position, so I suppose the biggest thing it does is when we oh. come back online, where we've made a nice jump on them, it sort of mentally breaks them a bit. That's probably the best thing about it. So we'll have to wait and see how it all pans out for Sun Hung Kai Scallywag. But we are getting into the final few moments of leg two. And in the last 24 hours, the plan is that the tracker will go live. So watch this space. That should be sometime this evening. If you're following the race experts on Twitter or you're following the race on Facebook, you will be the first to know when the tracker goes live because there is a real boat race going on out there. Dong Fong race team were in the lead. Then Mafre overtook them. But it's not all over yet. It's been difficult for us the last 24 hours. These guys behind catching up, and you know, I was not really sure how to best to defend. But hopefully, the next 12 hours, things will settle down, and uh, we'll come out all right. I don't know if my speciality is to do it like that or to do the Well, looking at the virtual eye with a final 500 miles to go in leg two to Cape Town, we've got four boats in the front group. The Spanish team, Mafre, looking strong at the moment, with Dong Fong race team and Vestas 11th hour racing in a very tight battle for second and third place that looks set to rage all the way to the harbour entrance. But behind them, the Dutch team, Team Brunel, Bauer Becking still in the hunt and the positions could yet change in the final few moments. But just look at how different the breeze is for this front four. They have been working incredibly hard in the last few days to stay ahead of this change in breeze. What does that mean? Well, they have got incredibly helpful conditions blowing up from the south, whereas the three boats behind are having to be battling against winds, blowing them away from Cape Town. Now, Sun Hung Kai Scallywag has gone into stealth mode, so your guess is as good as mine as to exactly where they're going to pop out. But for De Kafari and the crew on Turn the Tide on Plastic, they have now locked horns with Axonobel and Simeon Team Point, and they are really driving hard together, pushing south, trying to find the best way out of the breeze. Two different groups, the front with the pace, and we spoke to Yenemai Hansen on Vestas 11th Hour Racing to give us the inside scoop on what that battle's like. But before, we also spoke to Di Kafari on Turn the Tide on Plastic, just to see how the current battle is versus Axonobel. This last final thousand miles has been the most technical of the whole leg. The whole leg's been pretty straightforward, pretty easy, pretty basic in choosing where to go and when to go. And um, this final bit's been the most technical by far. It's been the most stress on the navigator. It's been the hardest work for us. And then you add to that our ocean match race with Scallywag and now with Acton Oval, the whole Southern Hemisphere, we've been within sight of the boat or within AIS range of the boat. So it's been awesome. Secret Scallies. The position report came in, we had the big decision of whether we keep going or do a course of 90 degrees to Cape Town, which is a bit depressing. We obviously elected for that one. Axo came with us and then Scallies disappeared, so we just don't know. All we can do is hope that if they took the other route, they're now floating around in no breeze while we're still sailing along. David Witt was sending in some media from his boat, uh, talking about yourself, and he was saying that you guys have got some quick modes. I mean, he's worried about you in quite a few of the wind ranges. Uh, do you feel like you've got that upper hand at times? At times, but it's unbelievably how balanced it is. He did one to us where we looked like we were standing still. And I even sent him a message and said, where did that come from? We haven't seen that all leg. And he kind of sent me a smiley emoji back, and that was it. But um, we have been pretty good, and we've lost each other and found each other, and we've got back to them each time. So we do have some sweet spots. We just need to make more of our repertoire a good pace as well. So 
I think if you look at MapRe, they have the right mode at all angles, and we're still getting those missing angles filled in. And I think that's the big difference. But it was uh, really good for us with Scallywag area. And obviously now we've got a boat putting pressure on us now with Axa Nobel right next to us. So keeps the pressure on us and that's good for us. What's the battle like now with Axa Nobel? Well, it's kind of weird, you know, having a new rival out there. We're used to the Scallies and there's been a bit of banter, but now these are like a new unknown quantity. Um, we were quite confident we were reeling them in uh, after the last few scares. We didn't think we'd end up in a two-boat match race with these guys, but we are, so we just need to put everything into practice and uh, try and forget who's on board and just match the boat and um, kind of show what we've learned, really. And we are learning, and it is getting better, and we do have pace. Um, so we just need to have the confidence in our own abilities, believe in ourselves. It looks like you guys have got a great morale at the moment on the boat, certainly from all the media that we're seeing. And considering that so many of your sailors are effectively new to offshore sailing and they've jumped in at the deep end, they look like they're taking to it incredibly well. As of today, Henry was the last sailor to join the six um, like junior sailors to spend the most time at sea. So uh, now the conversation is talking of the food they're craving, the drinks they're going to drink, the showers they're going to have but I think that's purely just because they know where the finish line is now and it's getting ever closer. And for all your fans out there at the moment, what is your ETA? When can we expect you in at Cape Town? Uh, well, it varies between late Saturday night and early Sunday morning. So we're going to be the unsociable boat. Uh, but the important thing is hopefully it'll be in front of Scallywag and in front of Axon Oval. That's the plan at the moment. We're going to try our best. And for all our fans and supporters, we appreciate the support and just keep believing in us and we'll try and make it happen. We're a very new team, very young team as well, and uh, obviously we never expected to start up this well because um, we still have lots to learn, but uh, it you can say it's a dream start. Uh, we're doing well, the team's working really good together, and uh, we're pushing hard every time we can. So uh, obviously we are keep fighting for more. What's it like at the front at the moment? We've got the Dong Feng not that far away from us, and the Map Prey uh, on our bow, and then we got the, um, like 30 miles on, from our, on our bow, and the Brunel 30 miles on our stern. I think all of us are trying to look out for each other and see who's maybe trying something new and different. But um, yes, I think boat speed is a very big thing for the next couple of hundred of hundreds of miles and then uh, it comes down to some tactics and knowledge about Cape Town for the last uh, last little bit into Cape Town. Uh, any celebrations on board for the American sailors? <laughs> Today is Thanksgiving and we got three Americans on board. Uh, they're definitely trying to tell us and explain to us what it's all about. I say to them we should be thankful every day but uh, obviously <laughs> this is a very special day for them and um, I think they might get a chance to talk with their families. Other than that, I think they have chicken stew on the menu, so nothing really exciting. With all the hard work that we've seen the teams have to go through on leg two, how are your crew holding up? Well, the crew is positive, and uh, they are working hard. Um, there's obviously loads of things going on. Um, we know that we really want to do our best and make everybody proud and make ourselves proud. So everybody is fighting to the end, even on the coldest, hardest days in the Southern Ocean. But right now it's actually really nice. So, uh, but yes, we, uh, crew's doing well and uh, there's still lots of energy for the next 500 miles. Can you guys on Vestas 11th Hour Racing overhaul Dong Fong on this final sprint? That's uh, for sure the intention. We will try our best. Well, that's everything that we've got in our show today. Don't forget that the tracker will be going live sometime soon in that final 24 hours for the leaders as they approach Cape Town, which proves to be an incredibly exciting finish to leg two. Cape Town being a big part of the Volvo Ocean Race, and we're going to leave you with some of the amazing images that we've built up from this iconic location over the years.